I mean, it's funny because, like, as I'm playing Madden right now, I was just laughing because, like, it looks so simple. Like, you know, he's just running the ball or they're just blocking, but, like, it's a lot of X's and O's that people really don't see. Yo, yo, welcome to the YouTube. My name is Lamar Griffin. This is Let's Talk More Do. Uh, today we got Elijah in the building. Yo. We about to play some Madden, have some fun. I'm gonna ask him a couple different questions while we're playing Madden, and we just gonna, we just gonna vibe out, and then we'll talk about where we're at and uh, who owns and some other cool stuff. boy trying to crib it uh oh all right man so tell us you know what's your name and uh where you're from where'd you grow up um my name is elijah wilkinson uh originally from mount airy pennsylvania but i played my you know high school ball and stuff in downingtown pennsylvania hey. at downingtown west high school um from there uh i kind of took that the football way from there and went to umass amherst up in massachusetts okay. Played my four years there, um, and then came out here to Denver and been here ever since. So, how, so what was uh, what, so what made you choose the, the college that you went to? What made you choose UMass, man? I know, did you have any other offers, or how'd that go? I had a, a bunch of like D1 AA, you know, Stony Brook and Maine and O'Brien, all, all them, <laughs> all them, all them type schools. Um, I had committed to Coastal Carolina originally, and then something had happened with them, and. Uh, I wound up decommitting when I went on my visit to UMass and committing there. Okay, that's dope. I went ahead and uh, I went ahead and just just did it Go ahead and, and committed, and, committed and uh, spent my four years up there, and it was it was definitely pretty wild. Like <laughs> throughout those four years, I can only imagine. Um, man, couple different strength coaches, couple different head coaches, uh, a lot of tough games, a lot of close games. Those are the um, ones. Those close games get you. Man. Oh, those are the ones that hurt. <laughs> that hurt the worst. So uh, it was just tough, uh, you know, going through that for four years. So especially being in the NFL now, you know, all I want to do is win. Like, right, like, win, win like games. Winning, now, winning that, is... now that we're with people that aren't just, you know, they're not just playing to play and be right. at the university and say they play football. They, this is what people do. This, this is, is your what job, they do. Like, like your livelihood. So they want to. They want to be out here. They want to do this. So. That was kind of my excitement about being in the NFL and, uh, you know, coming to the Broncos, especially, you know, with them being Super Bowl 50 winners and uh, just trying to get back to that mm -hmm. is what I'm striving for and what I'm trying to do. So I thought it was a good fit for me to That's come fire. this way. That's fire. That's fire. I love it, man. So like, I'm a backtrack. In high school, did you play any other sports? Like, I like basketball. I was playing with my friends, you know, at the courts down down in the, uh, in the valley. Okay. And... They're like, all right, well, you know, I, I come out and I'm, I'm doing a, doing good in tryouts. I know how to dribble. I'm doing making layups and all that. And uh, I don't know what it happened. Like we were we were practicing like one night. And like I said, my mom she don't like to wait. You hey, know, like she, she got she got kids. <laughs> Moms she, don't she like on an wait. hour commute coming from home coming from work. <laughs> She is not having it. Like when practice is supposed to be done, like she's, she's like, it's done. And hey, he's coming home. I get home. you. I'm getting so you. So <laughs> she, <laughs> so she came up in there. We're in the middle of like this was the second, third day of trials, and uh, we're in the middle of it. She comes and knocks on the door and was like, he has to go. Like, he got like he got to get about it. He's got to go. He can't play. He, he like I don't know what more practice. You said you were done at seven thirty. It's eight fifteen. Like, like she I'm told not, your coach, like you got to yes, go. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> like like she wasn't playing. Play. Like, Mamas don't. Play. So she did that, and then uh, I was like, I, I had to go. Like I had to grab <laughs> like, my, grab my little drawstring bag and my book bag <laughs> and, and get my coat and get up out of there. Hey. So after that, we came back. It was the last day of trials. We came back, and it was posted up in the school. And uh, my all my my boys are clowning me. I'm like, what, what do you mean? Like, like what's going why? on? Why are you clowning me? So come to find out that like since I didn't finish. Uh, like the tryout he was like well i seen some of you but i didn't see a lot of you you know i i think it would be a good spot for you to be manager i said manager <laughs> like, like, i looked at i looked at him with the russell face like manager huh like 
I said, nah, I said, nah, I'm good off of that. And then that's when I really started, like, with my off season and stuff, like, turning up in the weight room and, and doing really stuff, like, putting, putting around ball around ball. ninth grade, 10th grade is when I started, like, really getting into it uh, with, with, like, the weightlifting program and, you know, staying after and doing football drills and, and all that stuff. So that's kind of when all that kicked off. That's when the basketball shenanigans. And you were like, I'm, I'm done with this basketball stuff. Yeah. Talk to me about the work, man. So, you know, the name of the show is Less Talk, More Do. Like, was there ever a time for you where it was, like, you wanted to, like, like, like even, like, when you were training for football, was there ever a time, like, where you wanted to give up or, like, things got hard? So, I think one of the spots that I thought that I was not giving up, but it got hard, was I was training. I, well, I wanted, one thing with me is I went through all this schooling. I wanted to finish school and get my degree. Yeah. So it was coming down to the last semester after my senior season, and you know people were asking me to come train and come to their facility and do whatever. Right. And um, I was like, okay, but I want to stay in school. So I was talking to my, my teachers and all everybody who was around me, and they kind of you know bought in and uh, they believed in, in what I had and they were like you know what like we're gonna we're gonna let you do this we'll let you be remote kind of while you're training because I was like my agent would fly me to Indy okay. I'd be training there for the week I'd come back for like two days like Monday or Tuesday and then fly back and just be like back and forth I just basically check in with them yeah them. check in with them like every every other week and turn in my stuff like via email or in person when I would come back uh, and then that was that. So it was it was pretty tough, you know, being coming back and forth, training with them, having to communicate with my teachers, uh, and you know, make sure that everything was solid on there, and that they kept me in school. Like I was taking tests. Like they put me on like a iPhone, on like a FaceTime in front of the class, and I literally like they when they start, I start, and they they'd have they'd have like my trainer Brian. He would like administer my test to me. What was when was that moment for you that you knew like. I, like I'm going to the to the NFL, and how did it feel for you? Um. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I knew he was hey, gonna fumble listen, soon. I was trying to get him out of there. You wasn't having those. <laughs> I seen you he take was, off too. Like once smacked. he once he ran the car, I was like, you oh. Like, bro, he taking off. Look, he smacked him, G. <laughs> you tried to slide too. Hey, you saw me. I tried to get mm -hmm. down. But what were you saying though? Uh, so like, what like when was that moment for you that you realized? I made it. Like I'm in the NFL. Like, like was it draft night or like was it? No. Like, oh man. Like when I when I came in, it was it was crazy because, uh, like I guess they weren't expecting me to be to be here as a free agent. Like, okay. and I was still on the board, so they were like, let's give them one anyway. You know that type that type of thing. You know I didn't have like everything that everybody else had. Like I was you know, like basically not even thought of. Like yeah. I was under the threes, I was I was that, that group like, under, under there. The like under? Yeah, like it was so like it was like, it was like it was like we'll we'll get you in like if there's a chance type of thing. Like so I'm holding the bags. I'm the, and like it's people underestimate holding the bags and like being like a being like a drill dummy. Okay. Because you wanna you wanna give the person work that's doing the drill. Right. You go know, there's ten offensive line at eleven, so you and another rookie is holding the bag. And you know, you do that for seven, eight people, then you get down and you do your rep, you dead by that, oh, yeah, by like, that. Like, like, <laughs> so it was it was a while of just straight exhaustion, man. Like I'm talking about like straight dead all the time. Um it was crazy. Oh, I need those. Nah, I need that. Yup, yup, oh, I need that. Bro, I need that. What's up, bro? I seen you trying to double hey, them. See? I seen you. Bro, hey, D Hop is a fool on this. Yeah, he nice. So yeah. when did it like hit? Did it, is that when it like hit you like? Yeah, like, so in the yeah, so that's when it kind of hit me like, you know, this is crazy. I can't believe like I'm in the NFL. Um, when I started like actually like getting reps, and you know, I'm a rookie. I'm going against Derek Wolf, and you know, I, I'm like, oh shit, like he's he's bullying me because I'm the younger guy. <laughs> right. Like, but like you know, as you learn and you know, time like once I learned and like I started to get the speed of the game down. Is that's when it really started. When it start, really started. The separate. speed difference from college to NFL oh is probably I can only imagine. It's that. unbelievable. Like, like, the, like the difference of and you think you know you D one like those like you would think that's like the fastest, oh, but it's like once you get to the NFL, it is the you know it's the top of the top of the top. Like, top of the top, man. <laughs> it's definitely like I remember I was going against Shelby and Adam Godsis and. People like that, and I'm like, damn, like these dudes is crazy, like, and they're only in their third year. Imagine right. somebody like, and then I didn't even get to go against Vaughn until like way like 
until like you, deep into like my rookie year, I like until they, yeah, <laughs> until they were like, all right, like we think he can, he can handle it, type of yeah, thing. Cool. So it it was cool, like getting to that point and coming over that hump, and like you know being able to handle a guy like Vaughn, gotcha. and and you know block him sometimes because right. he's unblockable. <laughs> he's unblockable. I mean, listen, Vaughn, Vaughn seems like it would it would be it'd be tough to it'd be tough to try to hold him. He he is unblockable for real, for real. Vaughn, like Vaughn it's crazy. All right, well, let's, hi, let's talk about where we're at right now. So right now, for everybody on the YouTube, we are in Elijah's Barbershop uh, All-Star. So talk to me about the barbershop, man. What made you, uh, like, as far as the business world, man, what made you kind of, like, want to start a barbershop, own your own business? I think I missed. <laughs> um, it's kind of been, so being out here in Denver, and, you know, like, because I've lived in a hotel for, you know, four months, wow, five know, months. Yeah. yeah, go coming out here from May all yeah, the way to the true. season you, and you, you never had through a, everything. Yeah, I didn't really have a stable place. You know, the only people who have places are, you know, the people who are draft picks and all that. So I'm staying in a hotel most of the time. And, you know, you don't know nothing. This isn't your city. I, they just brought me off a plane. They literally picked me up directly from, like, where you come get your baggage. Like, they're waiting on you. Like, so I didn't even have a chance to explore, see, see what's around. They come get you right from there, take you to the car, take you from the car straight to the facility. Like, you know, there ain't no stopping, no bathroom breaks, no none of that. You're going straight to the facility. So you don't really know, like, anything around here. And me, particularly, I've been getting my hair cut from the same dude for the last 10 years. I'm the same like, way, bro. I'm the same so way. It, so, exactly. So, it's, so you know, so you understand that it's just different when, uh, you, when you come to a new city and now all of a sudden you're going to have to get your hair cut from somebody new. It, it's completely different. So that was my whole understanding on opening up a barbershop and just kind of bringing that feel from Downingtown where I've spent my high school days and even before that, that Mount Airy feel from okay. where I'm from, just kind of a nice, cool, chill vibe. You know, you come in and get your hair cut on a Saturday, you know, it's vibing with the college football and, 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 every, and, every, and everything. Yeah, exactly. It's a safe space. Exactly. A safe space. space. You can come here, you can talk shop, you can talk whatever you want to talk to, to your barber while you're getting a haircut or to anybody while they're sitting here waiting on you. So... That was kind of my understanding of coming up with the shop idea and just kind of trying to make make my mark here in Denver for you know while I've been here for so long, so just trying to just trying to figure out a way to imp implement you know kind of what what I could do out here in Denver and what my the best of my abilities what I can do. That's super dope, man. So how how has it been as a business owner? So like on the podcast. On my Let's Talk More Do podcast, we have a lot of business owners that like want to start their own business and they're like afraid. Like, what advice would you give for someone like like anyone just going into business from like your business and what you've seen and like the process of it? Um, I'd say going into business, like everybody, there's gonna be a, a slow period or a down period, like in whatever trade that you're that you're opening up a business in. So. There's never a right or a wrong time to open it up. It's either you're gonna take the opportunity and go for it, or you're not. So it's my advice to anybody who's trying to do that is to just, with open arms, man, just, just dive right into it. And you and a partner or whoever your team is with you, make sure that it's strong because okay. you need a strong team. When you're going through obstacles. Strong team. When you're going through obstacles and, and you know, stuff that's you know making you guys take steps backwards and you know that you need to be taking steps forward you need that team that's behind you that's going to be like all right you know what it's all right we're going to do this we're going to do this we're going to make it better by this not just you know live in the past and oh why is this happening and it's not going so good and you know you need people who are going to be positive who are going to be with you and oh wow i can't believe i can't believe <laughs> oh my God, i can't believe that I can't believe that that just happened. Oh, he just man. glitched through my body. I oh, hope y'all know that. Super, super. <laughs> hey, he just almost made me fumble again. He's already made me fumble one. <laughs> but no, that's super. But good. yeah, but yeah, that's what that's my my advice to people who are trying to open a business. Just go for it, man. If that's your dream and that's what you want to do, why, when, what's a better time than now? Exactly. Give it a chance. It's now you you'll never know what it could be if you didn't give it a chance. Facts, y'all hear that? Facts. All right, let's talk about your personal life, man. I saw on your Instagram that you were recently engaged, man. So I shoot weddings. Talk me through someone who plays in the NFL. You play against the best players in the world. How nervous were you before you popped the question to your soon-to-be <laughs> your soon to be wife? Because I knew you had to be nervous, man. Uh, Talk to me. Yeah, I actually I phoned my best friend in in the in the bathroom. I was like, listen, bro, like I, I'm I, like I'm about to make I'm about to do it. Like, yo, what, give me some, give me a little like, what am I supposed to say? Like. Who's your, who's your, who's your 
Ryan. It was my buddy uh, Ryan. Shout uh, out I, to Ryan. Yeah, shout out Ryan. So, well, he didn't even help. Like at the, at the end of the day, he didn't even help. Like, well, he took too long because I was. He was obviously Italy time difference and okay. stuff. Um, oh, but yeah, you were in, you yeah, guys were in Italy. yeah, so so he was he was like, oh well, I'm busy right now. Like, I, like I'll, I'll give you some stuff to say. Give me a minute, and I didn't have a minute. Yeah, <laughs> so like, this, was in, this was in this was in the bathroom. Yeah. This was in the bathroom. So like, I got up from dinner and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, oh, there we go. I thought that was a pick hey, to be me honest. Too, let me get this deal going for you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, man, he uh. He was like, I'll send you some words of encouragement. Oh, what to I do? Field goal from like 10 yards away. Oh, that's sickening. <laughs> so yeah, he's like, I'll tell you what to do. Like, just give me, give me a minute. So I was like, all right. So I'm waiting on him to text back. He ain't saying nothing yet. And I'm like, oh. Radio Meanwhile, I'm in the bathroom and I'm like, oh my gosh. So <laughs> as I'm about to walk out, I was like, I turned back around like on some on some like eight, right. on some eight mile shit. Like really turned around and, and went back into the store. I had to throw up because I was like, not even that I was sick to my stomach, but it's just like it was nerve wracking. Yeah, but what I was about to do, this is a, it's a big change in your life. And I was just like, man, I can't believe I'm about to do it. So I had to pull an eight mile on him and uh. You know, rinse my mouth out and stuff, get right before I went back out there. And um, everything was good, man. I, I, I wound up popping the question and uh, everything everything wound up working out. I thought it wasn't going to because the photographer almost ruined it. Uh-oh, when no. he, yes, he, so I told them when the photographer get there, I told him what time I'll be there between. You photographers that do what I do, listen to this story because you never, you never want to always ruin Don't, don't like do this. It was, I couldn't believe that they let him do this because I told them at the front, like, on the phone, I told the dude from my hotel who booked the booked the guy. I was like, "Listen, tell him that you know we'll be sitting here." They told told me where we'd be sitting in the restaurant. Tell him to wait, so when we're leaving, he can catch us. And and boom, man, don't you know when he got to the restaurant, they brought this man to the table. Oh, so like he, it could have all been ruined because the photographer's there with the camera. So she, exactly, she, like she's like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, her senses are already going. She's wow. like, and I'm like, and I had to think quick. I'm like, oh my, I know they just didn't do this. It was, it was beautiful pictures. We go outside, we take some pictures on, on like the terrace outside. Cool. And then uh, we come, the hotel is really historic, like in Venice. Shelby said, Shelby Harris, your teammate said, why are you so trash at Madden? <laughs> I don't know if he's talking to me or you. He's, he's, probably, talking talking, he's probably talking to me because the last, the last <laughs> time we, the me. last time we played, I lost. So <laughs> I, I'm not going, I'm not going to lie. I, nice. I admit it. Shall be straight. Yeah, Shall be right. straight. He ain't the best though. Now, listen. now I'll tell you, Zach's better than you. Zach Kerr? Yes, he is. Shelby, <laughs> you trash, but I'm coming for you next. Shout out to Zach Kerr. I'm just playing. Shout out to my guy Shelby. Shout out to Zach Kerr. But we're going to have Shelby on the show too, and we're going to play. We might set it up, have Elijah and Shelby play on the show. Y'all stay yeah, tuned. Yeah. That's that funny. <laughs> Shelby something, man. Oh, I need it. My favorite part of playing in the NFL is that. There's a new opportunity every week. So you, you can go out, you can have a bad game. You can go out, you have a really good game. Oh, that's oh, crazy. I did you see what they did to him? I like, didn't see where you were at, so I was like looking and I was like, dang. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm on the cutback. Oh, what? Oh, that cutback. Nah, Fuller going to catch you. Fuller going to catch you. Fuller going to catch you. Oh, oh they, they, they couldn't let him not crib it. They couldn't let him not crib it. They were like, all right, he's not getting that tackled. Was, uh, Hundred and five yard return. That was that was messed up. He Deshaun Watson could have tackled him though for sure. That's crazy. That's amazing, man. So the prop father asked, um, what's it been like playing for Coach Bain? It's been great. You know, he's actually been like more of a players coach than people would think. Like it's not weird or different or anything. Like he's like a regular guy. Like even though he is our head coach, like he's the same, you know, as we are. And I burnt him. And I burnt him. Oh, yep. Oh, <laughs> yep. Hey, and I burnt I see I seen him. I seen him trying to run back to yeah, him. Yeah, he was just like, oh. Yep. He full of spaz, though. I mean, it's funny because, like, as I'm playing Madden right now, I was just laughing because, like, it looks so simple. Like, you know, he's just running the ball or they're just blocking. But, like, it's a lot of X's and O's that people really don't see. Wow. And uh, even with, like, I think the toughest thing is probably pass protection. Um, in the NFL because you need to know, you know, who, who the linebackers are and what their, what their responsibility is. And that's ba- all based off of, off of where they're aligned. And right, like, okay. so it comes off of, you know, watching more film, also practicing through the looks. Um, but also in the game, you get looks that you haven't gotten practice. So, so it's like, you know, you got to just adjust and ba- go based off your rules on what you know what to do. And 
what your rules tell you to do at that point in time when the look gets how it is. So it's definitely more mental than people would think than just, oh, I'm going to just, you know, maul this guy and go through through him. Like, it's a lot of thinking that goes into it. And when you see people mess up or 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 somebody gets a sack and stuff, most of the time, you know, people are athletic. That's what they get paid to do. But on some occasions, it's not always that. It's always, uh, you know, maybe the running back was supposed to chip. Or maybe um, it was a three-step drop and he held it for too long. Right. Or so, like it's people, people have no idea. people have yeah. no idea. You're just seeing the ball being thrown and caught and touchdowns. You know, so exactly. people have no idea what the the stressors or you know the other things that people go through.